Good morning and welcome to St. Michael and All Angels Online. I'm so glad that you've joined us. I invite you to participate in this morning service. The bulletin can be downloaded from our website. The hymns will appear on the screen as well as the responses, and they can also be found in the bulletin. Please join in, sing along, and pray the responses. In today's gospel, a king invites guests to a wedding banquet for his son, and they refuse. They decline the invitation. God invites us today to open our minds and hearts to receive God into our lives. Let's say yes to God's invitation. And now let's pause for a moment and center ourselves with the prelude music. Son and Holy Spirit. 
as it be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 25, beginning at the first verse. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm together by the whole verse. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians, chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Sintich to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness, gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you. Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness 
where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Please be seated. There is much to puzzle about and to struggle with in today's gospel. The third in a series of parables that Jesus delivers in the temple after having cleansed it by chasing out the money changers. It's a parable about a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. In the ancient world, weddings were first announced and then the fathers of the bride and the groom would huddle to work out the details, like how much dowry the father of the bride would receive for losing his daughter. And then the ceremony and the banquet took place. So it was an undetermined length of time between announcement and banquet, depending how, how long it took to work out the deal. In today's parable, when the invitation, everything's ready, come to the banquet, finally goes out, the invited guests refuse. Strange. Refusing an invitation to party with the king. A nice dinner of oxen and fat calves. You don't even have to do the dishes afterwards. Why did they decline? We're told simply, they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. And then we get into the really troubling part. The slaves who did the inviting being mistreated and killed and the king's violent response to that, which really gets our attention. But this morning, I want to stay with the invitation, the king's invitation to the table for a feast. Because coming together at table is a powerful thing. Three years ago on October 27th, a gunman walked into Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh and killed 11 worshipers during the Saturday morning service. One of them was 75-year-old Joyce Feinberg. In the wake of this horrific crime, her daughter-in-law, Marnie, started something called Two for Seder to try to turn her grief and anger into an opportunity for peace and reconciliation. Two for Seder is very simple. A Jewish family invites two non-Jews to their home for the family's Passover Seder meal. They invite them to their table. That first Passover, more than a thousand people took part. Seemingly so simple, inviting people who are not familiar with your traditions to your table, where strangers can become friends. Misconceptions can be corrected, barriers broken down, connecting, connecting on a deeper spiritual level at table. Marnie explained, knowledge is power. If guests know a little bit more about us being Jewish, two years from now, 10 years from now, they could be in a conversation where someone says something very negative about Judaism, and they say, you know what? I think you're wrong. Two for Seder is an example of the power of coming together 
at table. A few years ago, the mayor of a small town in northern Wisconsin posted on Facebook some false, derogatory, and hurtful things about Muslim people. The Muslim community in that area came together and they decided to invite the mayor and his family to a gathering, a meal. Not to confront or berate or even educate him, but simply to be together and eat together and get to know one another because the mayor had never met a Muslim. And to his credit, the mayor accepted. He accepted the invitation. And they came together at table. And the mayor posted the next day that he regretted what he said, that he was wrong, and he apologized. Coming together at table is a powerful thing. We don't know why the original invitees said no to the invitation. The parable doesn't say why. There's no reason to believe they had pressing concerns or that they were bad people. Perhaps they simply wanted to stick with their own kind, with people who looked like them and thought like them. Stick with people who have the same point of view, the same attitudes and background and outlook who practice the same religion, read the same things, watch the same news sources. Accepting the invitation to come together at the king's table meant rubbing shoulders with other people, with those people, and being exposed to different practices and views and experiences. Coming together at table is a powerful thing. It can be transforming. Jesus broke bread with many different kinds of people in his earthly life. People others had labeled sinners and unclean and unworthy. He got in trouble for his table fellowship more than anything else. We who gather around this table, this altar, who bless and share a meal of bread and wine, we know the power of coming together. Our invitation is bold. We say all are welcome because we acknowledge this is God's table and not ours, that none of us is worthy, but that all of us are beloved because we are made in the image and likeness of God. And when we see that in ourselves, we are more likely to see it in others, even others who are very different than us. And so, hopefully, all kinds of people come to this feast, like the group that eventually filled the banquet hall in the parable, the good and the bad, all sorts and conditions, backgrounds, views, experiences, and perspectives. A foretaste of the heavenly banquet feast of Isaiah. A feast for all people. All people. Dressed, we are told, in their wedding robes. Dressed in their baptismal robe. Representing their commitment to seek and serve Christ in all persons loving their neighbors as themselves and striving for justice and peace and respecting the dignity of every human being, every one. These are our baptismal promises. What we wear when we come together at table, hungry for communion with God and others, especially others who are not like us, dressed in the robe of openness and respect. When this happens, the kingdom of God comes near, because coming together at table 
is a powerful thing. It can lead to understanding, reconciliation, peace, and love. The kingdom of God come near. I invite you to stand and join me as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Gathered together in the unity of Christ's spirit and surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us place our needs and thanksgivings before God. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all laity bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially for Justin, our Archbishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Dabney, our bishop. Make our houses of worship places of welcome for all souls and enable us to reach out to strangers and friends in a spirit of hallowed hospitality. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Uganda, and in our own diocese, Church of the Good Shepherd, Clearwater, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and for all nations of the world. Give your grace to all who govern and are entrusted with authority. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love that we may work through the struggles that confront us as a whole human family. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of guidance, you teach us by your wisdom to be caretakers of all that you have made. Teach us to be good stewards of your beautiful and fragile earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the great multitudes, you teach us to reach out to all those suffering in mind, body, or spirit. Draw near to those who need your comfort and healing. We pray especially for Debbie Calmerit, Rich Green, Martha and David Balls, for John Coleman, Peter B., Kristen Belts, and Paul Goddard, for Meryl Rushworth, Margie Chalet, Susan Elam, and Judy Workman, for Claudia Johnson, Ed Perales, Wayne and Martha Ponader, for John Bordieri, Paula Traxler, Claudia and Jack Upper, for Jan Pearson Graham, for Gretchen Van Waltera, Holly Penny, George Craig, and Mary Lou Flynn. We pray also, silently or loud, for friends and family members whom we carry in our hearts. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those affected by COVID-19, whose lives have been disrupted, who are quarantined, who have been infected, and for family and friends of those who have died. 
Comfort those who are fearful. Cheer thou those who are depressed. And protect those who have remained healthy. We pray to you, O Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those confined to group and nursing homes and for their caretakers, that they may be protected from sickness and death. We pray to you, O Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We offer great thanksgiving for the many blessings in our lives. Help us to cradle a sense of wonder in each other and be supported by a fellowship of prayer and love. We celebrate those we pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Carol Kraft, Jim Sorter, Jillian Bath, Jean Glass, Bill Larson, Dave Washburn, Pat Van Alstyne, Nancy Garfield, Nancy Marr, Kim Ross, Sarah Barrand, and Cindy Brown. And for those celebrating anniversaries, Kathy and John Bridge. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for all those who have died, especially for Jean Chapman Castle and John McElwain. Deal graciously with those who grieve and surround them with your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done, and by, and by what, what we have left undone. We have, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the, For the sake, sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. supper he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks he gave it to them and said drink this all of you this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it do this for the remembrance of me Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we, we remember, remember his death, we proclaim, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Michael and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine 
is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. we await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Amen. accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. A few announcements this morning. First, our prayer concerns. Jean Chapman Castle died last week at the wonderful age of 97. She had her family with her at the time. And John McElwain died Friday morning under hospice care at Shell Point. Paula and his children all had time with him before his passing. Please keep them in your prayers. 
Debbie Kelmerite fell off her bike and fractured her femur and had a rod placed and moved to Help Park Rehab. Please pray for strength and healing for Debbie and for Alan. David and Martha Balls are not coming back down to Sanibel. They're both dealing with illnesses and in need of our prayers. Chuck Harden was moved to the pavilion from the hospital early last week, and he is in his 14-day quarantine. Please pray for strength and healing as he has been battling a long-time illness. Please pray for Rosa and the family as well. Stephanie Ray asks for prayers for St. Michael and All Angels in Lake Charles, Louisiana. They had been damaged uh, from, by Hurricane Laura and now Hurricane Delta. Please keep the people of the Louisiana coast and all those affected by the hurricane in your prayers, especially St. Michael and All Angels in Lake Charles. The ECW the ECW's 50th annual meeting will be November 12th at Day Spring. It is uh, via Zoom and all women are welcome. If you are interested in the ECW's 50th annual meeting, want more information about that at Day Spring, please talk to Modell Plumber. And finally, Zoom coffee hour to follow this service at 11.30. Thank you. 